M7 find trigonometric ratios using reference angles. And on this, we're mostly going to be talking about 30, 60, 90 triangles. I'll explain that better in a minute. And 45, 45, 90 triangles. Okay, so if you are taking an ACT, there is trig on the ACT, and one of these questions that we're talking about here will be on the ACT for the trig part. And to go in deeper on it, let's pretend that we had this equilateral triangle. And so if it's equilateral, it is also equal angular. If it's equal angular, then all of the angles are 60 degrees. And then let's say, and if it's equilateral, let's make all of the sides two. And when we do that and we cut it in half, oops, and get rid of that part of it, then that was, this whole thing was 60, and if I cut it in half, then we have 30. So we have this 30, 60, 90 triangle. And the reason for that is whenever we have unit circles, um, most of the angles, most of the convenient angles are 30, 45, and 60, and we'll talk about the 45 in just a minute. And so if this side right here was two, this side was two, and then I cut it in half, we get one, and using the quadratic formula, then this altitude is square root of three. So we're gonna break that up. And before I begin, I'm trying not to forget that. And um, when we talk about 60 degrees, 60 degrees is the same thing as pi over three in radians, and 30 degrees is the same thing as pi over six. So the way that I remember it, the six and the three, and the three and the six. So let's see here. So on all of the top ones, we have 60 degrees. And if we have this 60 degree angle right here, Square root of three is opposite 60 degrees. One is adjacent and two is the hypotenuse. So if we do sine, cosine, and tangent, sine would be square root of three over two. Cosine is one over two. And tangent is square root of three over one, which is just square root of three. Make that two right here. Okay. You want to somehow be able to recall these, maybe not necessarily in a quick fashion, but you want to be able to know how to get the answers when the ACT ACT comes around. All right. So on these, the thirty degree angles. This, this, and this, and this. When we're talking about 30 degrees, then one is the opposite, and square root of three is the adjacent. So sine of 30 is square root of three over two. Cosine, that's so not right. My bad. I would like sine 30 is one over two. Cosine 30 is square root of 3 over 2, and tangent 30 is 1 over square root of 3, but you can't have a square root of 3 on bottom, so we multiply by square root of 3 and square root of 3 and get square root of 3 over 3. I'm going to talk about the uh, reciprocal functions in just a little bit. I'm going to be kind of skipping around on the Let's go to the 45, 45. It really wouldn't matter 
what sides what size these sides are um but it is an isosceles right triangle if this is an isosceles right triangle then these sides are going to be the same and if these sides are the same and then we do the Pythagorean theorem to be able to find the hypotenuse we would get square root of two and just for, for reference if it was four this side was four then this side was to be four and if we did the Pythagorean theorem theorem this side be four squared to two okay so it really doesn't matter how big the sides are you're going to be able to get some reference points on that and because it's 45 45 but these are 45 so if this is 45 degrees angle right here opposite and adjacent or if this is the 45 this would be opposite and adjacent so it's both going to be one so you're going to get the same answer no matter which one you're, you're going to be looking at so one over square root of two but you can't have square root of two on bottom so square root of two and square root of two gives you square root of two over two one over square root of two and square root on bottom so square root of two over 2 and tangent is opposite over adjacent which is 1 over 1 which is 1. Now whenever I was in school we wasn't allowed to use notes every single time and we actually had to um, have these memorized and so this is what my teacher did. We made a three by three box. We put sine, cosine, and tangent here. And it needs to be in that order. And when our reference angles, we're talking about 30, 60, and 45 degree uh, angles, right? Well, we're going to put those in order. 30, 45, and 60. And then we sing Jingle Bells, okay? Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a horse up and sleigh. Hey, all right, so we're gonna do that, but we are going to use these reference angles. And it's gonna be one, two, three, three, two, one, all over two square root three over three one square root three both these have square roots basically everything would have a square root on top but if i put a square root of one on top what's the square root of one one so it really wouldn't matter on that So this is one over two. So one, two, three, three, two, one, all over two, square root three over three, one, square root three. One, two, three, three, two, one, all over two, square root three over three, one, square root three. And I actually use that whenever I was taking the ACT. So yes, I, I know this is throwing everything out there at one time, but that's what I learned. Okay, let me erase this one. Okay, now reciprocal functions. So we're just going to flip these. 2 over square root of 3. Can't have square root of 3 on bottom. So we multiply by square root of 3. And we get 2 square root of 3. And if I did that, if I, we look real closely, There's a square root of 3 over 2 and a square root of 3 over 2, right? Okay, so we know that the secant, cosecant 60, is going to be the same thing as secant 30. Cosine 60 and secant would be 2 over 1, which is 2. And 2. And 
1 over square root 3, square root 3 and square root 3, so it would be square root 3 over 3, square root 3 over 3, and this is going to be just square root 3 because if we already had square root 3 right here, what was the reciprocal of it? It would be square root 3. So there you go. Reciprocal of these, 2 over square root 2, and square root on bottom, which would be 2 square root of 2 over 2. The 2's would cancel, so we'd have square root of 2. Since those are the same, then those are the same. And if I took the reciprocal of 1, it would be 1 over 1, which is 1. So there are those. Those aren't going to be on the ACT. It's going to be a sine or cosine tangent of 30, 45, 60. Okay, after you find a couple of these answers, then it's going to get a little bit more, and then a little bit more, and a little bit more. And so, in after the first several problems, um, it's going to be changing quadrants. And what we're going to do, let's say that we had an angle in the first quadrant. Well, it's a reference angle, so it goes to the x-axis, right? And so we go to the x-axis, we make a right triangle. This is an x and this is a y. And if we, to get here, we went positive and positive direction, positive direction to positive direction, and our hypotenuse is always positive. So if all of these are positive, and this is your opposite, this is your adjacent, and this is your hypotenuse, opposite over adjacent, adjacent over hypotenuse, you know, all this other stuff, it's, everything's going to be positive. So your sine, your cosine, and your tangent is going to be positive. So we're just going to put an all there. And we're talking about when things are positive because the quadrants, the coordinate plane, makes a big plus sign. Okay, then if we ended up, then let's say maybe you had like 120 degrees that you are um, graphing. And if that's so, I didn't mean to do that, but I don't have an undo. I need to undo. There we go. Okay, so it's right there. And then if we graph it and we go to the x-axis because that's your reference angle how did we get here we went in the negative direction for the x and up for the y so this would be negative and this would be positive and this is your reference angle and so and your hypotenuse is always that well your, what is negative is the adjacent and if sine, cosine, and tangent, if these have your adjacent, then these are going to be negative because it'd be a negative over a positive and a positive over a negative. And so the only thing that's going to be positive in the second quadrant is sine. Okay, so everything's positive in the first quadrant no matter how big the angle is. The only thing that's positive in the second quadrant is sine. And then if we end up here in the third quadrant, reference angle, how did we get here? Well, this is negative because we went left. This is negative because we went down, and your hypotenuse is always positive. So sine, cosine, and tangent, um, opposite and adjacent, are negative, and if you have a negative over a negative, that doesn't look right, a negative over a negative, what is that? That is positive, and this would be a negative over a positive, which is negative. This would be a negative over a positive, which is negative. So the only thing positive in the third quadrant is 
And if I did the same thing here, um, the only thing that would be positive is cosine. And again, my teacher, um, let me back up when we were learning this. Everything that is positive, because I just wrote a big plus sign, all students take classes, just go counterclockwise, one, two, three, and four. So everything's positive in the first quadrant, only sine's positive in the second quadrant, only tangent's positive in the third quadrant, and only cosine's tangent in the fourth quadrant, along with their reciprocals. So everything sine, so cosecant would also be positive in the second quadrant, cotangent would be positive in the third quadrant, and secant would be positive in the fourth quadrant. It's going to make better sense whenever we actually get to those kind of questions, though. Okay, now on these, I'm actually not going to do most of these for you. Um, let's just talk about zero degrees. If you're at zero degrees, then you are on the x-axis. And let's just say that this is a unit circle. So this point is going to be one, zero. And if you're on a unit circle, then remember your sine theta is your y and your cosine theta is your x. So, and then tangent theta is y over x. So if I'm doing sine of zero degrees because we didn't go anywhere, we didn't go up, we didn't go down, we didn't curve up or down, um, that would be your zero because of zero. Your cosine of zero, it is not x, is one. because of one and your tangent is zero over one and any time zero is on top then zero is your answer so your tangent would be that and I'll do the 90 degree one and then I'll be done with that I'm not going to do one here 270 how do you get here you go over zero and up one so that is your x and that is your y. So sine 90 is going to be 1 this time. And cosine 90 is going to be 0. And 1 over 0. Anytime 0 is on bottom, it is undefined. Okay. Then if we do the reciprocals, well, 0 is 0 over 1. So if I take the reciprocal of that, I get 1 over 0, which is undefined. 1 over 1 is 1, so if I flip that, I get 1 over 1, which is 1. Tangent is 0, so if I flip that, I get undefined because 0 would be on top. And you can kind of see what happens on, on those. All right, so here we go. Secant 60. I've already given you this on the list. Oh, wait, before I forget, sorry. So radians, I forget on radians. Zero, zero degrees is the same thing as zero radians or two pi radians, right? 90 degrees, 90 degrees is the same thing as pi over two. One hundred and eighty degrees is the same thing as pi radians, and I didn't have it on here, but it's two hundred seventy degrees is three pi over two because it's one and a half. All right, secant sixty on most of these at the beginning. You can just use the chart up at top. So secant sixty is two. Cotangent 60, 
Square root of 3 over 3. Power over 4. If 90 degrees is the same thing as power over 2. Half of 90 is 45 and half of a half is a fourth. So that would be power over 4. Just one thing that, you know, you could kind of stick in the back of your mind. So secant 45 is power over, uh, square root of 2 over square root of 2. Power over 3 is the same thing as 60. In tangent, 60 is square root of 3. Tangent, 5 pi over 6. So let's change the 5 pi over 6 to degrees. 6 goes into 180 30 times, so that's going to be 150. 150 is right here, which makes 30 degrees. So sine is positive in the second quadrant, and we're doing tangent. So our answer is going to be negative tangent 30, and tangent 30 is square root of 3 over 3, so our answer is going to be negative square root of 3 over 3. 7, 180 over 6, which is 30, which is 210, and 210 is right here, that makes 30 degrees, and tangent is positive this time in the third quadrant, so we just have to do tangent 30. So this answer is going to be positive square root of 3 over 3. And then if you remember on previous lessons, if we have a unit circle, our cosine of our answer is x, and our sine of our answer is y, and if we're doing 2 pi right here, that's the same thing as 360 or 0. So that means that we're going to be on the x-axis. And that, when you're on the axes or axes of x or y, just find the coordinate that you'd be on. So if it's 0, you're going to be on the positive x. If it's 90, you're going to be on the positive y. If it's 180, you're going to be on the negative x. And if it's 270, you're going to be on the negative y. So on this, it's 360. And secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And if cosine is our x, then we would take the reciprocal of 1. And the reciprocal of 1 is 1. 5, 180 over 3, which is 60, which is 300, which is right here. So if this is 300, then this is 60. And what is positive in the fourth quadrant? Cosine. And we're doing cotangent. So this is going to be negative cotangent because cotangent and tangent are negative in the fourth quadrant of 60. And what is cotangent 60? Square root of 3 over 3. So this is going to be negative square root of 3 over 3. Eleven, one eighty over 6, which is 30. So 330. All of this is 330, so this is 30. And Cosine is positive here, and we're doing cosecant, which is a reciprocal of sine. So our answer is going to be negative cosecant 30. And cosecant 30 is 2, so our answer is going to be negative 2. Negative 45 degrees here again in the fourth quadrant, and cosine is the only thing positive in the fourth quadrant. And this is 45. And so this is going to be negative because it's sine, cosecant and sine, cosecant 45 
45, and cosecant 45 is square root of 2, so this is negative square root of 2. One thirty-five is right here, which makes the reference angle of forty-five. And sine is the only thing positive here, and we're doing cosine, so it'd be negative cosine forty-five. Cosine forty-five is square root of two over two, so this is going to be negative square root of two over two. Negative pi over two is negative ninety. Negative 90 is on the y-axis, so it'd be 0, negative 1. Cotangent, well, let's just talk about tangent. Tangent is y over x, so cotangent is x over y. So our x is 0, our y is negative 1, and if 0 is on top, then 0 is your answer. Negative 5. 180 over 4, which is 45, which is negative 225. Negative 225 is right here, which makes a 45 degree angle. And sine is the only thing positive in the second quadrant. So our answer is going to be negative cosine 45. And cosine 45 is square root of 2 over 2, so this is negative square root of 2 over 2.